Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and I think I've got a really interesting video for you. As I mentioned last night on Twitter, I went down the rabbit hole of Tesla's Roadrunner project and came across some really interesting new bits of information that I haven't heard anyone talk about yet and started to connect the dots on some things that I already know about Tesla that really hasn't been talked about by very many people. So let's jump in. The first thing that I want to talk about is recently, and hat tip to Electric for this one, this is where I first found out about this, Tesla recently filed a improvements project initial study with Alameda County to improve a couple of buildings that they own, and the addresses of those are 47700 Cato Road and 1055 Page Avenue. Now, these two buildings are not on the main manufacturing plant property, they're just a a little bit down the ways. In fact, I'll bring up a map here so you can get an actual visual for how close these things actually are. It's literally an eight minute drive, a 2.6 mile or 4.1 kilometer uh, distance from the manufacturing plant. So they're really, really close. Now, the reason why we haven't heard about these two buildings is because Tesla has owned these buildings by way of Solar City when Solar City acquired Salevo, the solar company. Now, this is back in 2014, I think, when Solar City acquired this company. And Tesla's been sitting on these buildings and they've been using them for various things. And now they wanna modify these two buildings to allow them to manufacture this next generation of batteries that we've been hearing so much about from Elon. And there's been so much hype about regarding Tesla's battery day. Their improvement study says that the Cato building will receive the majority of improvements proposed pursuant to the project involved involve interior changes to the existing Cato building. Cato building is a two-story structure, 126,312 square feet building with a first floor footprint of 96,976. Within the first floor area, the existing battery manufacturing and R&D facility known as Terra occupy the western portion of the building office and support functions, cafe, storage, shipping and receiving, ring the south and east portions of the floor. And utilities and mechanical support space rings the northern portion of the floor. The center portion of the first floor is currently unoccupied. The second floor of the building has a smaller floor area of 50,008 to one square feet, primarily occupied by offices that ring the exterior edges of the building an approximately 46,155 square foot portion of the second floor is open from the ground floor to the second floor roof. So what it appears like Tesla is going to use that entire second floor for battery manufacturing. As far as 1055 page, the study says that no major modifications to the structure of this building are proposed, but existing available space within the southerly and northwesterly portions of the building will be used to accommodate Tesla's additional Roadrunner supporting manufacturing and R&D operations, including a portion of cathode electrode manufacturing and the final process step in the battery cell manufacturing. The study does say that from beginning of construction to end, it should only take three months. So technically, if they were to start on this this month, they could potentially be done by battery and investor day in September. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this battery day gets delayed again, just so that this new facility can be shown off. There's going to be a total of 470 employees that will be assigned to this project. The majority of them, around 400, will work in shifts 24 hours a day at the site. As I mentioned before, these two buildings were owned by Solevo, the solar company, until Solar City acquired them, and then Tesla acquired Solar City. Over the last couple of years, based on the permits pulled, Tesla has been retrofitting these buildings for battery cell manufacturing, specifically around the cathode. This then made me think of a tweet that Elon recently made about where the future of lithium ion batteries are at. On June 11th of 2020, Elon said, battery industry is world world champion at BS, quote, lithium ion, end quote, doesn't really mean anything. What matters is cathode and anode material. There are many choices, but nickel cathode with carbon silicon anode works great. And then that reminded me about a private conversation that I had about a company that's based right here in the Denver area called Celion. 
It does appear like Celion is still operating out of the Broomfield area because if you go to Tesla's job postings, there is a position open in that Broomfield area for senior cell engineer. I happened to come across a paper that the founders, Daniela Piper and Tyler Evans, created when Celion was still operating independently. There's a few things that do seem really, really interesting. Celion cell technology through utilization of lower cost materials and manufacturing compatibility will be 30% less costly than state-of-the-art lithium ion cells. By approaching the problem from the view of the battery cell system, Celion achieves its breakthrough energy density and performance. They continue on to say that, with this philosophy in mind, the team at Celion has undertaken the task of redesigning the old lithium ion battery system, and their approach has already revealed some impressive achievements. Celion has shown that when integrated into their unique system, state-of-the-art nickel-rich cathodes and silicon anodes demonstrate a much improved structural stability and safety even at high temperatures. Dr. Molina Piper also says that Celion has created the first viable 80% silicon lithium ion battery anode capable of integration into standard electrode manufacturing processes. So in summary, the technology that Celion has sounds very similar to Elon's tweet on June 11th. Could these two facilities in Fremont be the culmination of their acquisitions of Celion, Highbar, Maxwell, and whatever others that we don't know about that Tesla has not disclosed, so that Tesla can indeed, just as we've been predicting for the last year, year and a half, go into their own cell production? I think the answer is yes, and they're about to reveal the cover off of what they've been working on the last couple of years at the battery and shareholder day. Now the question is what vehicles will these new cells go into? If I were to take a wild guess, I'd say that they would probably go into the highest margin, most expensive vehicles that Tesla produces. This makes tons of sense to me if Tesla wants to refresh the Model S and X, which have had and seen plummeting sales for the last two or three years. What would be better to rejuvenate those cells than to rework the Model S and X? Not only the battery packs, but also the interior and exterior of the car, which people have been asking about, or at least many people have been asking about for a long time. This also makes sense to me because the Model S and X are low volume. The size of these two buildings that they're retrofitting or about to retrofit probably won't be mass battery cell production. It'll probably be on a smaller scale initially until they figure out and work out all the kinks. Once they get that going, I think that they could then take that and then put that into their gigafactories around the world. All right, that wraps up this video. Really, really interesting, I think. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you're a regular, hit the like button, and I'll catch everyone on the next video.